Hello, thanks for tuning in. It's Stuart, the Classical Record Collector. I've had a parcel from eBay, and when I when I buy records on eBay, I'm going to make a video, an unboxing video, where I'm going to take them out of the box, talk about the records, why I bought them, how much I paid, and uh, of course test them out. Now when I test them, I'm probably just going to use some mobile phone footage. So after this little chat, We'll switch to we'll switch to testing the record out on my Riga Planer 2 with a mobile phone, mainly because it's the most convenient way to do it. So I appreciate the quality won't be brilliant, and you'll see a screen like that, but uh, it's the best way to do it. So <clears throat> yeah, <clears throat> excuse me. I bid on three records that were being sold together on eBay, and um, I think I've paid too much, frankly. I got a bit enthusiastic. I've not really had these before. I was keen to have them. And I don't think I've paid too much in the sense that I've really paid what they're definitely worth. And they're probably worth more. But I may decide I want to sell these one day. And I think from that point of view, I'm probably not going to make too much profit on them. But nevertheless, they're a really good addition to any collection, any classical record collection. They're, they're like uh, iconic works. So without further ado, I'm going to open this up. I actually paid about five or six days ago and they've only just arrived. That's okay. I mean, you know, I sell on eBay myself. I trade in watch parts and, you know, I appreciate people not harassing me when I, after I've posted stuff and I don't harass sellers. It arrives when it arrives. As long as it gets sent, say, I don't know, within a week or so, I'm quite happy with that. Now I've got some bids at the moment on various items on eBay. I'm probably going to talk about those. And I'm also going to be making videos because I used to be a professional uh, classical record dealer. I've got a lot of knowledge and I can value just about any record just like that. Thousands of them. So I'm going to be making some videos where I'm going to go through all the item, all the a lot of records on auction on eBay. Talk about the records, how much they're being sold for and what they're really worth, what to look out for, different labels, etc., etc. You might find that interesting. I was a classical record dealer for 10 years, um, and I've seen tens of thousands of records, and I've learned a lot from other dealers. So, yeah. Okay, so I like the way these have been packed. They're in a, um, they're in a box which opens up so you can get the records out nice and easily. I've only had to use my Stanley knife here just to slit down... The tape and open up the records open up the box to get to the record so let's find out I bet you're really keen to see what I've bought well I hope so otherwise what's the point in watching the video so they've been graded at more or less X for the jackets and EX for the records which essentially means that there shouldn't be any significant audio problems on the records the surface should be re really reasonably quiet there shouldn't be any repeating ticks and there shouldn't be any sort of um, uh, jumps or skips there shouldn't be but they could be because it's been visually graded it's not actually been played this one so let's get it out very well packed 10 out of 10 for that and what I've actually bought is this um, I've got all three of the set of Pierre, Pierre Fournier the great French cellist playing the iconic uh, Bach suites for violin sorry for cello solo and they're on archive. They are German pressings, or at least I've been promised that they are German pressings because after winning the bid, I actually looked at the listing carefully. It said German in the headline, but when I looked down, it said UK made. And I had to clarify that because it says German in the heading. I want them to be German pressings. I mean, the UK pressings are probably no worse, but the general rule in collecting is that if it's a German company like... Deutsch Grammophon, Archiv, you want it to be a German pressing. If it's a British company like Decca, EMI, you want it to be British. That's that's how it works. Um, Philips tends to be considered to be Dutch by collectors. You know, I think that um, I think there's some British ownership there, but generally speaking, with Philips, you want to be looking for Dutch pressings. I've mostly got UK pressings in my collection. Doesn't matter because I'm not selling them on anyway. So the value is not really too relevant. But with these, because I was bidding quite a bit of money, not quite top dollar, but enough, I really wanted them to be German pressing. So that if I decide to sell them on, I can do that. 
Okay, so let's just have a quick look at them. Look at the jackets. These records are quite old. They, go, I think that they're 70s pressings. I can see straight away there's a problem there. There's a bit of a tear on the on on the lower uh, spine. So I'm not delighted about that. I'm not really too happy about that. I can't remember whether he said there was, but that's not terrible. But I'm not exactly delighted to see that. Um, it's a gatefold. I mean, apart from that, it looks absolutely fine. I think what I would do with that is I would probably try and use a bit of Prit, maybe, just to try and seal it. Because if that gets any worse, you know, it's really going to sort of degrade it. Let's have a quick look at the condition of the record. So there's the record. And um, it says actually made in Germany, so I'm quite happy with that. Um, and it's got the title. Let's have a look to see what the condition's really like. Now I'm just looking at the condition now, checking it, taking care not to touch the surface. And actually, it looks more or less pristine. I'm really pleased with how the surface of that record looks. There's a very slight surface mark there, which I think probably will come off with a clean but it looks very good there are no spindle marks at all that's promising so yeah i'm pleased to see that you know jacket condition is really important um it really is important it's not quite as important as the condition of the record but if you're collecting and particularly if you're selling on the condition of the jacket is really important so that little tear at the bottom does degrade it slightly let's have a look at another one now the 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 actual covers are colored slightly you know they're kind of oh just you know vaguely sort of marginally sort of yellowed but not seriously enough for it to be a problem you know because obviously if they've been sitting just smelling them i can't smell any smoke which is a good sign because i'm not a smoker and i detest smoking i detest vaping as well by the way let's have a look let's go through them uh, okay, so it's another gatefold. Now the jacket here is perfect. Uh, sorry, it's, we've got the... So yeah, you can see inside everything looks fine. Now the recording was actually 1960. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I knew. I'm going to talk about what pressing this is. It's not an original issue. And, you know, no, it's not original. Because this is a 70s pressing. And let's have a look. Yep, the surface looks fine there are some just some hairs on the surface i'm using my eagle dealer's eye to look at this look for any problems nope can't see any issues there yep that looks fine very good condition well ex genuinely ex i haven't played it yet i'll try one of them out uh, before i bring this to an end so that's another one which is okay and let's hope the third one is all right as well uh, the jacket is all in good condition. Ah, it's a, sh it's a shame about that tear. Oh, we've got a problem here. Let's have a look. I'm not sure what that is. There's some problem there on the back. I don't know if you can see. There's some circular thing here. Some, um, it almost looks like a label's been peel peeled away or something. I'm sure you can see that. I'm not sure what it is. What is that? Um, it's kind of scraping off. Yeah. Okay, that's scraping off. I'm not sure what that is. I think that's paint, oddly enough. Let's have a look. Um, I know it's unhealthy. Believe me, I don't usually lick my finger. I know it's unhealthy. My mum would slap my wrist if she saw me doing this. But, you know, um, oh, what I don't want to do is take off any of the wording on the back here. I'd rather leave it be. So I'm just making it damp to see what happens. And yeah... It is actually coming away, so I think I can clean that up. That's all right. Let's have a look at the record. Don't let there be a horrible scratch and just ruin the whole set, which it would do, frankly. If one of these was badly scratched, I would send the whole lot back. But that looks okay. Good. Well, all the record surfaces look fine. I'm really pleased with those. Yeah, so that's it. Um, they're all good. They're all they are genuinely EX. There's just one jacket that has got that problem. That's the only disappointment. I'm going to try and repair that. Try and make it look as inconspicuous as possible. 
So um, just just briefly then, yeah, so I knew this wasn't the original issue when I bought it, but frankly, to see three of them together, you know, I couldn't resist. Now, I've noticed they normally sell for £25 a piece on eBay, and I started bidding on these, and um, I got them in the end for £38 plus shipping, and the shipping was about £6. So I paid £44 for these. So uh, say £13 each, more or less. Uh, yeah, I think that's not a bad deal. I think that's not bad. If I was selling these, I'd be wanting about double the price. I'd be wanting £80. I've seen somebody selling a box set, the reissued box set on Archive, 70s pressed, late 70s pressed for about £100. I think the three individual records have got to be worth about £80. Unless I really need the money, I probably won't be selling these because they're just too important. Now, normally reissues don't go for nowhere near like uh, anywhere near the kind of money that the original issue goes for. That tends to be the rule. But in this case, because the original set, I'm not even sure whether I've even seen the originals in stereo, the, the original uh, archive. I've actually seen them in mono on those old archive gatefolds. You probably know what I mean. But I'm not sure if I've seen them in stereo. And it says they were recorded in 1960. Um, I'm sure they must be available in stereo in the old sort of fabric type box set. And I would imagine that that would be worth about two or three hundred pounds. Um, original issue. But I still think that these are worth good money because they're, I mean, to find all three of them together is quite valuable. Plus, they're monumental works, they're iconic works. And I don't think I'd be overvaluing these to say that it's worth about £80, really, I could sell them for. If I was selling them to the end user uh, in Japan, for example, I'm sure there's a Japanese out there that would pay £100 for this set or more even though it's not an original issue so okay i'm now going to uh i'm not i'm going to end the video this part of it here and i'm now going to go and um get my mobile phone out and just put one of these on the platter and just see how it sounds so I'll be back in a minute hello right okay it's uh, Stuart here i just wanted to show you that uh, if you look at the three jackets the one in the middle is actually in fairly good condition i mean clean condition you can see this one here is slightly yellowed and uh, this one less so so the one in the middle is the cleanest i don't know i might have a go at trying to scrub that a bit cleaner but yeah okay so here we are all right here's my uh, here's my riga so i've got the record on the turntable let's just drop the needle down and find out how it sounds okay <laughs> That's actually quite noisy. Um, let's just push it. Maybe it's just the first track. Let's try another track. That's a bit better, but to be honest with you, I'm disappointed with that. However, however, I've got a method for cleaning records, and I think that is probably listening to it, what I call groove grime. So I'm actually going to use, I've, I've got a special, I've got my own special cleaning technique, and I'm going to have a go at cleaning that. I think it will clean up okay. If for some reason it doesn't, uh, I'll have to send it back. <laughs> so I will be reporting on this, and uh, I'll let you know what happens. Okay, guys, thanks a lot for watching me. Stay tuned into my channel and I'll be bringing you more interesting videos. Bye for now.